to the... What? Oh, this? It'll make sense later. Hello, I'm the Grim Reviewer, and welcome to my review of Phantasm. Just let me grab my balls and we can begin. This movie took an original idea and went with it. This film has balls. And because of this, I will now watch all in the series, all of the Phantasm films. Ah, Phantasm, released in 1979, with a $300,000 budget and a box office of 12 million. Wow. This science fiction fantasy horror film has done well and has a cult following. Directed, written, edited, cinematography, blah, 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 by Don Coscarelli. Good job, Don. The story is about two brothers, young Mike and older bro, Jody. Also, their loyal family chum, Reggie. Oh, Reggie. We open with a topless girl killing a guy. At least she let him orgasm before killing him. She's a keeper, for sure. Can't say that about most girls, letting us at least have some kind of finish and enjoyment. Well, my wife at times, but you know how they can get. You know, wives. Eh, eh, meh. One of my favorite parts of the whole entire movie is the music. It is great. It's eerie, unworldly. I found myself just being entranced by it. I mean, during the film, I had to watch it a couple of times because I'm sitting there during some parts just lost in the music, tapping to it, humming to it, just in my head. Ooh, really strong movie score, in my opinion. And that opening shot, as I was talking about, with the the mostly darkness, blackness, the house, the woman, sex, purple, lavender's a good color. Mike is super obsessed with his brother, stalker much, and while at a funeral, he notices the casket of their deceased friend being taken away by a strong, creepy, and tall man. Yes, the tall man. Not a superhero, but, well, just wait and see. The tall man, played by Angus Scrim, is the monster villain of the film. Scrim's presence is Perfect. He is eerie and creepy and with such a simple look. I mean, he's just, it's his presence. It's the aura he gives. It's just enough to be, woo, woo, woo. Even gives me the chill. Ooh, my bones. The tall man is the undertaker of Morningside Cemetery. And we find out he's not just a tall, scary, evil man. He's a tall, scary, evil, supernatural alien man. Oh yeah, and don't forget, don't succumb to the Lady in Lavender. Because she turns out to be, yep. <laughs> Very nice though. Mm. Oh, uh, <clears throat> So, there's a scene where Mike goes and visits a fortune telling woman. Oh my gosh. The psychic grandmother in the wheelchair. Ugh, it's uncanny. And we hear about him and his fear of nothing. Don't let the fear get him. Where have I heard that before? Oh yeah, Freddy. Interesting. But yes, take away the fear, you take away its power type of thing. Foreshadowing. After Mikey has a little surprise for his brother while he's about to bone his gal. Possibly saving his life though. Mikey runs away and Jody chases after him with panties in his mouth. A guy who eats and runs. Again, it's uncanny. Anyway, gotta love Mikey here. He sees her tits, he smiles. Ah, every young boy's dream. <laughs> so we have Mike investigating the place, and then this is where we are introduced to the flying silver balls that kill. Silver balls. Silver balls. They're just gonna. Oh, the, oh, 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 kind of, oh, oh what did I just see? Ah. Uh, oh. So the movie continues with, and then this apparently getting the, the man dying and then realistically pissing all over the place, but that would have given it an X rating. Not all the nudity and gore, but that. If you find this scene arousing, you're f Fucked in the head. I know there's some sickos out there. Nice. <laughs> the tall man appears. Bah! But Mike escapes with the tall man's finger cut off. Mike then convinces Jody when he shows the finger. Well, now it's a creepy furry puppet bug. And they take care of it with the garbage disposal. And unless you're an idiot, we all know what a garbage disposal is and how they work. We then get more minion mayhem. Ah, yes, the minions. I really liked how you just kind of see the last second of them at the corner of your eye dash it off somewhere. But then you find out they're like little tiny dwarf... Little people. Reapers. It's weird. Especially the fight scenes. Feels like you're tossing a child in a Grim Reaper costume. But anyway, we get more Minion Mayhem. And then we find out how they're made. 
Tommy! And, and then, throughout this, we get two lovely ladies sadly getting tech away, and Reggie! Not Reggie! <gasps> I hope the ice cream's okay, though. Two scoops, please. <laughs> uh, anyway, Jody has now had enough. They go to get that evil tall man. Mike, though, is locked up in his room, but luckily he's part MacGyver and escapes. Well, not that lucky, because surprise! The tall man is waiting. They run, battle, end up kidnapped. He escapes. The tall man goes up in flames. Kaboom! The bros find out the secret room secret. Also, Reggie is okay. The secret is, he takes the dead and makes them into the little zombie reaper kid things to be sent to their planet to be slaves. Oh my gosh. Like I said, Reggie's okay. Oh, Reggie, no! No, that pretty lady stabs him. Man, my bros eventually have a plan to defeat him, lure to the Minecraft, and the tall man is thwarted, buried by rocks in the mine shaft. Phew! We then get Mike waking up. Oh no, not another, it's just a dream type of story. <sighs> He goes to... Reggie? What? He's alive. Mike tells him he's worried of the tall man. Reggie reassures Mike it's just a bad dream and that Jody died in a car wreck. And that's why he's so upset and having these nightmares still and he can't cope with it. What the hell? Wow. What did I just watch then? He's dead? Reggie proposes a trip idea. Mike goes to pack up and then... The tall man is seen in a mirror. Calls him out. Ooh, very chilling how he calls him. I... I... I mean... Pissing myself too with that. And the minions come crashing through, pulling him in. The end. What the hell? That's how you end it. It's already trippy enough at points. Damn. The story is a bit absurd, and it's a story that is there, but at times confusing and clunky, but it's got good surrealism. It's a story about death, mourning. It's got the fantasy elements of it. It's really not that scary, but it does have some really kind of disturbing and thriller-esque moments. The use of the dark is its best aspect, and that's what truly makes it visually and just hauntingly good. It's amazing. Everything seems to be shrouded surrounded by black. You get the the mortuary place in the cemetery. It's like there's just a building, white building. Everything around it's like black. You don't see anything else. When they're driving, it's pitch black. You see nothing but the car. The lights from the car and the car in front or just that. So much everything's darkness. It kind of works with that dream-esque aspect and the fact that it's just, it's really haunting. It's like, where are they? It's so so freaky that everything everywhere is just dark blackness i liked it also scary of note the spheres came from one of coscarelli's nightmares <laughs> don't want to be in that head rather go and clive bar uh, and no uh, no no that one's really hellish too Whew. and i thought i had some some demons in my head <laughs> in the end i can see why it's so loved and how it has sequels which i really do want to get into and watch too because Angus Scrim does a great job as a tall man. I'd like to see more of it and see what happens to more of these characters if we get any more. All the way to the one that last one that happened just a few years back. What? It's got a passionate fan base, which I can understand. It's truly original in a sense, and it's very unique. Sure, it's not scary, but it has that scary element to it that gives you a good horror. Horror doesn't always have to be. Bah! Boo! So I give it a really good rating. I, I really enjoyed it. I look forward to watching more of it. And yes, another one that just won't get the touch of death that a lot of bad movies deserve. This one is okay in my book. I tell ya. I tell ya. And oh, the tall man. Super tall. I'm so short. Ooh.